Welcome to worship this morning. And we've been treated, some would say blessed, with a little dusting of snow. A reminder and of the beauty of this season, and I'm sure it will look nice if it hangs around for a little bit with the lights this evening. As we come to worship in the warmth and beauty of this space and surrounded by the warmth and beauty of God, may we find our time here blessed. And as we begin our worship this morning, I would invite us to share if we had any blessings that we've experienced in this past week. Any blessings? Sure. Blessing. The ecumenical concert was a blessing last Sunday night. Last Sunday night's ecumenical concert. Yes. Yes, thank you so much, mm -hmm. Bernie, for organizing that and bringing that back. I think everybody really appreciated that. Pam. My granddaughter, Ella Joy, celebrated her fourth birthday two days ago and she'll be delighted to hear about lighting the joy candle. <laughs> the birthday of your granddaughter. Other blessings we've had in this past week. Well, with those shared and others that come to mind, I would invite us to always lift them up, gratitude to God. And may we now turn our hearts and our minds and our spirits to the worship of God. Once there was a man who did such amazing things, and who said such wonderful things, that people asked him who he was, and he answered them, I am the light of the world. And in that light, as we continue our Advent journey, we find hope and peace and joy. Please join me in the call to worship. Rejoice, siblings in Christ, for our sorrow and mourning will not last forever. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to God. The joy of our God shall drive away the sorrow. Rejoice, siblings in Christ, for God's mercies are new every morning. Amen. Glory to God. Every morning is new grace abounds. Rejoice, siblings in Christ, for God is with us even now. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to God. Let us worship together in joy and gladness. Without voice, break 
breaks forth in song, a lame one leaps in wonder. The weak are raised above the strong, and weapons are broken asunder. Rejoice, rejoice, take heart in the night, the cold, the winter, and chill. The rising sun shall crown you with light. Be strong and loving and fearless. Love be our song and love our prayer. And love our endless story. May God fill every day we share. And bring us at last into glory. God and source of all joy, we confess that sometimes we ignore those who need connection and companionship. We forget to call those who are alone. We assume children and teenagers are fine instead of asking questions and listening carefully. We push down our own needs for friendship and communication. Forgive us, God and call us into fellowship often so our joy may grow and our sorrows may be carried together. Amen. The season of Advent reminds us of the hope we have in the humanity of Jesus. God came to us, leaving behind the glory of heaven to be a person, feeling pain, joy, loss, and love. The candle of hope, because in Jesus, heaven came to earth. Advent reminds us the Prince of Peace came and lived among us. He felt stress within himself and conflict with other people. Yet he chose his path of peace, peace within himself and peace with humankind. Today we relight the candle of peace because Jesus showed us how to live in peace. There is joy in the anticipation of the Advent season. Just as Mary waited for the birth of her son, we count the weeks and days to celebrate Christmas. Waiting makes space for imagination and preparation, and joy fills our heart in that waiting. Today, we light the candle of joy because joy is in the promise that the Holy One is come. He came down that we may have hope. He came down that we may have hope. He came down that we may have hope. Hallelujah forevermore. He came down that we may have peace. He came down that we may have peace. He came down that we may have peace. Hallelujah. 
joy. He came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have joy. Hallelujah forevermore. Good morning. Good morning. I don't see any young friends. We cannot see God, but we have God's story and God's promises written in our Holy Scriptures. We know that God is present and that God loves us. God is everywhere, in all people, in the creation, and at all times, and in all places. During the season of Advent, we are waiting. We are waiting for Jesus. And there are many different ways that we wait together. In worship, we wait together, marking each Sunday with a candle. At home, we are busy preparing to share the joy and love of God as we wrap presents and bake cookies. Many of us are waiting for Santa Claus. It takes a lot of trust to count on and wait for someone we can't see. Just as we can't see God, we really don't see Santa. But Santa was a real person who lived a long time ago. The church knows him by the name Saint Nicholas. Have you heard Santa called this name? Today we have a special treat to help us wait for Jesus to be born. St. Nicholas is going to join us to talk with us about how he loves God and how he shared God's love by helping other people throughout his life. Please join me in welcoming St. Nicholas. Friends, we celebrate the birth of our Lord in just a few weeks. Were you a friend of Jesus? I was born about 300 years after Jesus, a very long time ago. I was born in a country called Lycia, which today you know is Turkey. Can you show us where Turkey is? Turkey is about halfway between Asia and Europe. And it's on the Black Sea. Yes, it is. Nicholas, we have heard a lot of stories about you. Would you tell us about yourself? Certainly. Like many of you, my parents were followers of Jesus. We prayed together and studied the Bible. They taught me about the life of Jesus. Your parents were known for helping the poor and those who needed help. They were a lot like our families who fill boxes for harvest hands or who bring gloves for the tree. My uncle was a bishop in a city of Myra, and after my parents died, I spent a lot of time with him and praying in the church of Myra. When I was 19, I became a pastor and teacher, just like Pastor Chris. There are a lot of stories about how you help people in need, late at night and in secret. That's because I wanted people to know about the love of Jesus, that he is with us when we care for others. I heard about the family with three daughters that you helped. Back in those days, a girl had to have money to get married. The money was called a dowry, and it was used to help the new family get started. If you didn't have a dowry, you didn't get married. That family was so poor, they had nothing left to eat. 
the daughters were to be sold as slaves. The night before the first daughter was to be sold, she washed her stockings and put them in front of the fire to dry and went to bed, very sad. And in the morning, she found a small, heavy bag full of gold inside her stocking, enough to provide food for her, hand, her family and money for her dowry. The next morning, another bag of gold was found in the second daughter's stocking. And the third night, the father stayed up to see who it was who was helping them. The father was so thankful, I told him, Please do not thank me. Thank God that your prayers have been answered. You continued helping people and were later chosen to be a bishop, a special kind of church leader. You saved sailors from the dangers of the sea and helped unprotected children. All your life, you showed people how to love God and care for each other. And because of that, the church called you to be a bishop, and later they named you St. Nicholas, because you are an example of how we should all live. And people around the world celebrate your generous and holy example at this time of year. But it seems like there are an awful lot of different names for you. In England, presents are given to children on Christmas Eve to celebrate the birth of Jesus. They know me as Father Christmas. Children in Russia know you as Grandfather Frost, a kindly old man who brings gifts in the middle of their long, cold winter. They see you wearing an ice blue coat lined with warm fur. In Northern Germany, I am known as Pelez Nicole, which means Furry Nicholas. I accompany the crystal, or Christ child, on Christmas Eve visits. And when the Northern Germans settled in Pennsylvania, they bought their traditions of Christkindl, Christmas trees, and Pelez Nicole with them. And over time, you became known as Kris Kringle. And the Dutch name Santa Claus, which means Saint Nicholas, was mispronounced by American children, and you call me Santa Claus. That reminds me, Sinterklaas. In Holland, children put their wooden shoes near the fireplace on the night before the feast of St. Nicholas. And in the morning, they find small presents in their shoes. Just like the gold I left in the three daughters' stockings. Thank you for taking the time to share your story with us. I hope it will help us to be better followers of Jesus not just during this season, but all the year through. Thank you. Thank you. And I have a word that there might be something you're going to leave for us in the back of the church. Sure. Christmas comes early. Yes, it does. <laughs> and would you please um, join us while St. Nicholas walks back? Um, to the St. Nicholas hymn. The saint of Christmas now we see, St. Nicholas, St. Nicholas. He comes with gifts and glad are we, St. Nicholas in the morning. His stories and his legends both, St. Nicholas, St. Nicholas. They bring great joy to youth can old St. Nicholas in the morning. For children, sailors everywhere, St. Nicholas, St. Nicholas. He offers help and tender care, St. Nicholas in the morning. The child of Bethlehem we seek, St. Nicholas, St. Nicholas. Show us the child and mother meek. St. Nicholas in the morning. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice 
and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God, he will come with vengeance, with terrible, with terrible recompense, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Our gospel this morning is taken from Luke. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his ser servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. He has helped his servant, Israel, in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promises he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and Sarah, and to his descendants forever. Now please join me for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us be to God.
Will you pray with me? O oh God, for the gift of this day, for the gift of life, for the gift of gathering, for the gift of your word, we are filled with joy. And now, O oh God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts may be acceptable in your sight. For you alone are our rock, and you alone our redeemer. And for this, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. So here we are on the third Sunday of Advent. Here we are on December 11th. Here we are watching the calendar tick away. And I wonder as our Christmas activities and celebrations and preparations continue to go on, are there certain traditions or activities or things that you do in your own household or with your family that bring you joy. Maybe it's something that happens every year, or maybe it's something that you just wait for and look to happen. What are those things that are part of your traditions in getting ready for Christmas that bring you joy? Putting up ornaments. Baking Christmas, Baking Christmas cookies. What kind of cookies? Twelve different varieties amongst my five siblings. Wow, twelve different <laughs> kinds. Wow, we'll be there. <laughs> what else brings you joy? Making gingerbread. Making gingerbread. Stringing Christmas lights on the bushes outside my house. Stringing lights After on the bushes. And and half of them don't work, Clark Griswold asked. What brings you joy in this season? Sipping brandy with Bill by the Christmas tree. Grayson. Uh, putting up a Christmas tree. Putting up a Christmas tree, indeed. What else brings you joy? Jim. Snow. Very good. Music. Other things that bring us joy. Laura's uh, Christmas morning bre breakfast rolls. Ah, Laura's Christmas morning breakfast rolls. We'll be over. <laughs> <laughs> and then your house for dessert. People who we love being with love. People, being with people who we love, being together. So my little moment of joy last night was uh, when I discovered on TV that Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was going to be on, followed by Frosty the Snowman, my childhood favorites. But even more exciting was the fact that our Golden Retrievers wanted to watch it too. <laughs> there they were on the couch watching intently on the TV. And so we shared a love-filled, joyful moment watching Rudolph and Frosty. These joy-filled moments, if we heard what they're saying, involve many different components that are similar. It's about sharing. It's about being with others. It's about things we do on an annual basis. There's a ritual about it, things we like to connect with. 
and we might repeat them year after year. We might share them year after year. We might pass these things on to those who are younger than us in hopes they might continue, in hopes that what brings us joy will also bring them joy. But more importantly, to be tied into something that brings us joy. On this third Sunday of Advent, we celebrate around the candle of joy. A reminder that in this season of waiting, in this season of looking forward, in this season of longing for the birth of a Savior, for God to come into our lives once again, to be born to us, to touch our lives, to be enfleshed like us and teach us something about hope and love and joy. We do on this Sunday look forward to the joy that comes, the joy that comes from God, a deep and profound joy, an everlasting joy, a joy that makes us sing and smile, a joy that warms our hearts and fills us and moves us forward in our way of following Jesus. Consider the stories we hear, the stories of a desert being transformed, the story of people being transformed from their limitations, a story of a remaking of creation in places that look desolate and dry, where it's hard to see signs of life and beauty. Here, God changes everything. In a moment, when Mary comes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, and upon their meeting at the door, there's a recognition on Elizabeth's part, that Mary is bearing Emmanuel, God with us. And Mary sings out in joyful song, my soul magnifies the Lord. And Mary sings about a joyful vision of a recasting of an order of things, of a bringing down of people on high and a lifting up of people on, who are low an evening of the playing field, putting everybody on the same level with the promise that we will all come closer together, that divisions will be overcome, that discord and disunity will be a thing of the past. As we said when we lit this candle this morning, waiting can be something, well, that's hard for us to do, we're often a very impatient people. But in waiting, like one who carries a child, there is time to reflect and ponder and dream and think about what that new life is going to be about, what things will happen, what will be accomplished. And in thinking about that, as it brings joy to a mother's mind, so in our waiting, it brings joy to think about the possibilities and the promises. And when we take in and ingest these stories, the promises of God, that in places where it might feel not so joyful, in lives where it seems darker than brighter, there is this promise of joy that comes with God with us a joy that carries us onward, a joy that lifts us. Henry Nouwen pointed out that happiness and joy are not the same thing. Because our lives are not always happy, because we might face difficult and gray and dark times, because things don't turn out always the way we want them to, because we feel sadness and loneliness and longing at times, and so do others around us, particularly ones we care for. 
it might seem odd to think about joy. But the kind of joy that Nawin talks about that can be present and is a gift to us in the midst of that when we're not happy and when we are happy and every time in between speaks to that deeper intent of God for us to be joy-filled, to be infused with that which gives us life, with that which gives us hope, with that which gives us strength, with an assurance that no matter what we're going through, God knows what we're going through. Because God walked the earth and lived life as we do, flesh and blood. But in Jesus, there was also the practice and the faith of being a person of joy and tapping in to that holy joy which buoys and sustains that lets us go forward to dream and imagine and to wonder and to let the promise and possibility of what may come comfort us now but also move us to do what we can to make that more of a reality here and now. On this third Sunday of Advent, as we move ever closer to Bethlehem and ever closer to a manger, ever closer to a birth, may we be an expectant people, expecting God to do something to us and for us. God coming to be with us giving us a deep and profound joy that lets us celebrate and sing, that lets us step forward with a glimmer of hope, that lets us live as a people of faith, being honest about our life that is lived between great moments of happiness and great moments of sadness, but a life that we can live more deeply and profoundly with the assurance of this joy, knowing that no matter who we are, no matter what happens to us, God understands us. And God is always offering that joy, a joy to go deep in our hearts, to be placed within us and to be shared from our hearts to others. May we be bearers of God's joy for our sake, for the sake of the world, and for God's sake. As we come to a time of prayer this morning. I would invite us to not only hold up those in prayer who are upon our prayer list, but also to share those joys or concerns that are upon our hearts this morning and so that we might hold those prayers in community. And I would ask that we hold the family of Christine Fox, Laura's aunt who passed away in our prayers this day. Colleen? Claudine. Claudine, I'm sorry. Claudine. I misheard. Claudine. Are there other joys or concerns to share? Yes, prayers for the family of the woman who was tragically killed in an auto accident here in Foxborough. So may we be God's people at prayer, beginning first in silent conversation with our creator, redeemer, and sustainer.
joy-giving God. We are grateful for the fact that it's one of your many gifts you give to us. We are grateful for your promises to be close by, for your willingness to experience life the way we experience it. And in doing so, showing us a way <clears throat> where we might become a new people reborn, where we might become fully who you intended us to be. In this season that is filled with joyful sounds and talk of rejoicing, of bright lights, dream-filled nights, traditions. We are mindful that for many, it is a difficult time, as there are shadows, as there is sadness, as there are struggles, And we pray for those who experience those moments now. And as you gift us with joy, We pray that we will become vessels and disciples and agents of that. In the living of our days. Bearing joy into the world. bearing light into darkness with small acts of kindness and love and larger movements of justice. O oh God, as the weeks progress and we get closer to our celebration of your birth amongst us, as the light grows and it gets brighter, may that remind us of your promise of a light that continues to increase and brighten our days and our path. Showing us a way and a future that is transformed, a beloved time and space and community. So we humbly offer this prayer along with the silent meditations of our hearts, along with those for whom we pray this day, even as we are bold to pray as Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. With thankfulness, we give in gratitude and joy. With prayerfulness, we give in sacrifice and love. With hopefulness, we give in commitment to God. Happy are they who believe that the promise of the Lord will be fulfilled. Happy are they who believe that the promise of the Lord will be fulfilled. I sing with all my soul and praise the Lord. My heart is glad because of God, my Savior. For he has looked upon his humble servant. And who am I to merit his attention? Happy are they who believe that the promise of the Lord will be fulfilled. I may henceforth regard myself as happy, because my God has done great things for me. And every generation gives a saying, the Lord is mighty and his name is holy. Happy are they who believe that the promise of the Lord will be God and source of all joy, cheerfully and humbly, we bring our gifts and offerings to the community to be used for worship, helping ministries, our children, and all other wonderful ways you create goodness around us. We wait with anticipation to see what you will do with our gifts, knowing your gift to us was the greatest gift of all. Amen.
You may be seated for a few announcements prior to our commissioning and benediction. I'm going to let Elizabeth offer some announcements to start. The mystery novelist Elizabeth George has a whole novel called Missing Joseph, and it starts with looking in art galleries at all the pictures of the mother and child and no Joseph. Well, we too are missing Joseph, <laughs> along with a couple of magi. Um, the Christmas pageant is next Sunday um, during worship, and we have no Joseph, and we have no, no wise people. Um, if you would like to fill any of those roles, please let me know. Otherwise, we're going to have a pageant missing Joseph. Um, there will be a short rehearsal next Saturday, time still to be determined. I will be sending out an email. Um, this is a very low entry Christmas pageant. You literally have to walk up the aisle when I tell you to and stand here. That's it. Um, so. If you find Joseph anywhere, let me know. <laughs> I also want to let you know that um, downstairs on one of the tables in coffee hour is the word joy, and those big posters that we do. There's some colored pencils down there. You'll see on the bulletin board, hope and peace. Feel free to color in a bit of joy, and we'll get that up as well. And finally, my thanks to Jim McKinney, who has been a very flexible St. Nicholas. <laughs> As we go out into this week, a reminder of a few things that are happening here at Bethany. Next Sunday will be the final Sunday for the collection of hats and gloves and mittens for the Foxborough Discretionary Fund. Uh, please get them here during the week in the office or bring them and put them on the tree next Sunday so we can bless them on their way to families in need in Foxborough. This coming Wednesday in Barton Chapel, we will offer a blue Christmas service at 7 p.m., a place and a space for those who might be feeling heavily burdened with loss and pain and sadness, loneliness or uncertainty. This is a service where we can find comfort and name those things. It is a place where we're invited to come and pray in solidarity with those who may be going through those times in this moment. Seven o'clock in Barton Chapel. Next Saturday will be our December community dinner at 4.30. There's a sign-up sheet downstairs in the fellowship hall. You can also go online to the Sign Up Genius if you're able to help on that evening. And as we do come closer uh, to Christmas, a reminder that our Christmas Eve service will be at 5 p.m. here in the sanctuary. We will not have a service on Christmas Day, Sunday, December 25th. With those announcements made, I would invite us to rise in body or spirit as we prepare to go forth into our week. As we get ready to leave worship, we change the light. It never goes out. But that light continues to change us and it fills us with hope, joy, and love. I should also look in your direction, Pam, and maybe make an assumption that if people are looking for something to do this afternoon, experience some joy of music, that Neponset Choral Society will have their second concert here at 2.30. Two. Two. Two o'clock? Two o'clock here, and you can get tickets at the door? Yes, indeed. We welcome anyone to come and see those risers filled, filled with singers. Filled with singers. Very good. So now, siblings in Christ, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us now and forevermore. And let God's people say, Amen. Amen.
The peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Let us share words and signs of peace with one another as we depart on this day. The desert and the parched land we rejoice in blue, blooming with God's flowers and life and rejoicing with song. The glory of God's love will be given unto death. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. The blind shall see, and the deaf shall hear, the lame shall walk, and we all will see. The blind shall see, and the deaf shall hear, the lame shall walk, and we all will see. To the Strengthen the hands of the feeble, make firm the knees of the weak. Say to hearts that are frightened, be strong, fear not, here is your God. And he's coming for you. Streams will be in the desert and rivers in the steppe. Burning sand and up pools of water, the Lord will bring his people. And the drink of his peace, hey, the drink of his peace. The blind shall see, and the deaf shall hear, the lame shall walk, and we all will see. The blind shall see, and the deaf shall hear, the lame shall walk, and we all will see. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return on the day and That's enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow will flee, sorrow will flee. Have no fear in the desert, have no fear in the night. I, the Lord, am with you with strength, with hope I am your God. And my freedom is yours. Hey, my freedom is yours. 